All right, let's get to the Ukraine part uh, as we tease, just to give everybody an update. I know everyone's very interested. Uh, there's a lot, as we said, behind the scenes about what might be happening here in Washington. A lot of it is a guessing game. Matt Gates had intimated previously that there was some sort of secret deal made with the House Democrats. That is actually not the case. However, there is significant pressure from Democratic leaders and Speaker Mc or Leader McConnell on McCarthy to bring some Ukraine aid to the floor this week. So let's go ahead and put this up there on the screen. This was done immediately after the vote. House Democratic leadership said, quote, when the House returns, we expect Speaker McCarthy to advance a bill to the House floor for an up or down vote that supports Ukraine, consistent with his commitment to making sure Vladimir Putin, yada, yada, yada. Let's move on to the next one uh, that we're talking about here and says moving forward that there is still work to be done. When the House returns, we will advance that bill to the House floor for an up or down vote. However, when Speaker McCarthy and others were asked about this, they did not commit to bringing any sort of vote to the floor. There is still a big question about whether that's even possible. Uh, for those who were following all of this fight, there was also some high stakes drama where Senator Michael Bennett placed a hold on the actual continuing resolution before the Senate floor and said that he would not vote for it unless lead leaders in the speak in the leaders in the Senate came out in a bipartisan statement to demand a vote for Ukraine. This is what Senator Schumer said. As a result of that hold, let's take a listen. But this is a bridge CR, and Leader McConnell and I have agreed to continue fighting for more economic and security aid for Ukraine. We support Ukraine's efforts to defend its sovereignty against Putin's aggression. So thank you, thank you to my colleagues on both sides of the aisle for their excellent work. So as you can see, major pressure there from Democratic leaders, including Leader McConnell, so it's a lot of bipartisanship. But in the House of Representatives, it is no guarantee that this is going to come to pass. Let's go ahead and put this up there on the screen. House Republicans in last week signaled major opposition to the Ukraine aid. So they got only a slim majority of the House Republicans in the caucus to actually vote for it. 93 Republicans voted against Ukraine aid in the House. And Crystal, what was noteworthy to me is that these 93 Republicans increased dramatically up from 70 in July, but this was only over 300 million. This is not about 6 billion. This is not about 24 billion or 100 billion, which is what the administration wants. This was only 300 mil. If I believe that if they put a 25 billion figure or a hundred billion figure, I think we would get a majority of the House of Re uh, House Republicans to vote against it, just on a dollar figure amount, regardless. And I think that that is very significant in terms of the fight dynamics. There's a secondary element to Ukraine fight right now, something called transfer authority, where what they wanted to include in the bill was the ability for, if we can't have any more money, what we can do is we can legally unlock some funds that we have sitting around in the government and mm -hmm. we can transfer it over yeah. to Ukraine. Just very run of the mill stuff, they, of course, that you always do um, for the government. <laughs> It's an amazing system that we have. Anyway, the government can't even do that right now. So Ukraine actually right now has basically zero leeway from the U.S. government from a legal authority perspective. I expect to see the transfer authority and the aid. One of those two things is going to hit the floor. If I had to guess, I think the transfer authority will pass because there's no new money. It's just already existing just money. Moving they, it's an accounting around. gimmick. It's a trick. But yeah. and of course, net effect, it actually doesn't matter. It is basically a vote for for more money to Ukraine, but it's easier to justify. But in my opinion, it is not nearly as given as much as people are thinking. Yes, I believe that it definitely will pass the Senate. Will the House actually be able to bring this to a vote? And this is where the speakership dynamics come into play. Well, if Kevin McCarthy is gonna vote, work with Democrats to get Ukraine funding through, it would be a massive betrayal for a lot of MAGA Republicans, not just talking about Mac Gates. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about people like Donald Trump Jr., about Donald Trump himself who have been lobbying against it. So the political dynamics for Ukraine right now are not good for future aid, despite whatever these Democrats are saying, or even Matt Gates is saying about some secret deal. I, I don't believe there is a secret deal at all, based on everything that I've been able to see. So the difference between the House and the Senate yeah. is really important to keep in mind here. In the Senate, with uh, McConnell and Schumer, yes. and you have more Republican sentiment in favor of Ukraine aid, I think. It's 40 out of pretty smooth sailing there. Um, the House is where all the question marks lie. And it's very unclear as of today exactly how many Republicans would be willing to support additional Ukraine aid. But as Sagar was just pointing out, the number who are opposed to it continues to go up and up and up. So this really all, once again, comes down to Kevin McCarthy and questions over how far he is willing to push things and how much danger it puts his speakership in. 
there's this, they call this the Hastert rule. It's sort yes. of like tradition. The idea is that, I don't know why we're copying Hastert with anything, but anyway, <laughs> the idea is that if you're Speaker of the House, you don't bring things to the floor if you don't have a majority of your own caucus in support. Again, there's no like law or regulation or whatever. This is just like a tradition that speakers have tended to follow. And so there's a real question mark right now over whether or not you have a majority of the Republican caucus in favor of Ukraine aid. Up till now, you did. But it seems very likely possible somewhere in that zone that at this point, you actually don't, and especially depending on the dollar amount. So this, again, complicates things. And this is another lever that Matt Gates could use if McCarthy does try to push Ukraine aid through the House, where, to be clear, there is a, you know, a very clear overall majority when you add Democrats and Republicans together in the House. There's a very clear overall majority in favor of Ukraine aid. But does he bring it to the floor? Does he violate the quote unquote Hastert rule, which isn't really a rule, but whatever, they tend to follow this tradition. Is there a workaround via some, you know, legislative parliamentary maneuver like the discharge petition that, you know, if you have a majority who sign on, it can be brought to the floor without um, the, going through the speaker. So they do have some things that they can do. And I think it is very likely that it will take some time, but Ukraine will get the aid that the Biden administration wants. But in the meantime, this is going to be, you know, quite a fight and quite revealing on the Republican side of who stands where. And like I said, Matt Gates is a little bit down and out right now because this all didn't go that well for him. But this could be a direction that is very uh, fruitful for him, where he definitely has a Republican base behind him and where he has significant part of the caucus on his side exactly. as well. Remember, a vast majority of Republicans do not support any more aid to Ukraine. And even the majority of the country now does not support any more aid to Ukraine. So a lot of all these lawmakers are very out of step with the public, but that's nothing new here. Uh, the real sure. question, though, is it politically, I do think it would be a disaster for McCarthy to actually force this as a fight. It would definitely play into the speaker dynamics. And then even if he did survive, let's say he made a deal where they voted to keep him and uh, the deal was that he, they had to bring a Ukraine vote to the floor. I mean, what does that look like, you know, to, again, to the vast majority of Republicans and his political viability in the future? So there's a lot of question marks that remain there. Hey guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right. We're subscriber funded. We're building something new. We want to replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com.